let's have a look at the Giza Plateau and how the pyramids, not how they were built, but how they are built, what makes them up. And it's a, uh, especially, you know, lost high technology, you'll keep hearing this meme that, it's, but for instance, that the Great Pyramid is two and a half million precisely fit blocks and, the, and you know, it can't be done precisely fit, precise, precise. The reality of the situation is very different uh, from what the, the narrative uh, goes um, into that. So how they were built, let's put that to the side because you can't really even begin to answer that question until you know how they how what what makes them up how they are what are they built of so before we think of how we have to think of what they are and the reality of the situation and i'll come back to it so uh the giza plateau as it is now the great pyramid cafre pyramid mancara pyramid and we also have kent Cowway's uh tomb slash pyramid and I'll go into this, but let's, uh, the pyramids are actually, especially well, Kent Cowways, Caffrey's and the Great Pyramid are, are built on existing, so before the pyramids, there was something there. Now, I've just, you know, sort of photoshopped this as, a, you know, I, no one really knows, we can't tell, but something like this. So we have the original bedrock where the Caffrey's Pyramid, as we'll see, it's actually built it's not just built from flat ground up, there is a bedrock underneath it and we're not exactly sure how much there is and same with the Great Pyramid. There was something here prior to the pyramid's construction and I don't know, I've just sort of guessed uh, as best I can, but there is something like this before the pyramids were built and uh, it's a wonderful calendar in regards to the Nile flood and we'll come to that in a moment in regards to their situation, the equinoxes and the solstice both uh, winter and summer solstice and that is a agricultural societal calendar so there we have the, the pyramids and i'll reference this study the geological uh, geological geomorphical study of the original hills of the uh, pyramids themselves here's the map so the great pyramid or cheops and the middle pyramid or Khafre or Khafrem pyramids and they are were built from on top of natural structures to begin with and we'll have a look at that at the moment it's also uh, Kent Cowway's pyramid as well so there's the aerial view so Great Pyramid, Caffrey's Pyramid, Mancara's Pyramid and Kent Cowway's tomb and you can see it's uh, large most of it is built from the bedrock now there were casing stones and some structures added to it but the most of it uh, is natural in that it was there was something pre-existing there uh, a mound or a hill or whatever you want to call it that but now we go to Caffrey's pyramid and here we're looking at the southwest corner and here you see the images of the southwest corner and we can clearly see that the bedrock is still there now that's not the only place where we can see that essentially every uh, all around the base of Caffrey's pyramid we can see the bedrock still defining it. So again, that's the southeast corner. Now also where this area is being quarried out, we can also see the strata lines, how they merge there. And again, I'll link this study where we can see those photos, but they're just seeing the same thing. So we can also see the strata line still in the base. So the bottom port, so the pyramid itself sits on a platform in that way. The northwest corner, and again we can see the same thing where we see still bedrock uh, built on there. Now this will also apply to the Great Pyramid. Now this image is looking from the northeast corner of Caffrey's Pyramid, and you can see you know, the, the bedrock still there. Just to zoom in on it, and you can see this from Street View as well. So this is, um, but again, just to count. Now we'll come to un, un, some other important features, but uh, there is a lot of, uh, I don't know, you know, mythology uh, or, or uh, it's, they're wonderful, amazing, amazing structures, no doubt, but we don't need to add stuff onto it that's just not true. And I often get this, well, you, you haven't looked at it, you know, blah, blah. You, well, this often comes from people who 
clearly haven't uh, looked at and are just parroting uh, 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 the lost high technology narrative. You keep hearing precisely fit stones and we'll come to that, but it's first let's start with the bedrock. So now we'll look at the southeast corner and again you can see where the the bedrock is still there, these massive large blocks. It's only really above that point, but the, you know, above this point that the pyramid truly starts in terms of a structure that's built. So Cheops, Kephrem, I'm mean, sorry, Kephrem or Kafre's pyramid is built on an existing mound or, or some sort of uh, hill there. Now, there has been engineering on, on that site. Now, it's firstly limestone, okay, it's not Firstly, granite, you can you can work granite. There are a lot of ways with very primitive technology to really just chew through granite. Fire setting would be one of them, but uh, but this is limestone, and limestone is no, it's just not a, a difficult stone to work. But now we see the like the diagram and the internal structures, and there's the north side. So that's the north, and we're looking at the eastern face, and that's the north slope there. So it's pretty much you could overlay that photo onto this uh, illustration but note how there is a mound here so we still have the original bedrock and we get an idea of that because the tunnel that goes down hits bedrock before the base does this is the same of the great pyramid but we really should be adding a little bit to that uh, image because even though that image sort of gives you the idea that the cafe pyramid is built on on directly from bedrock up it's not quite the case even at each of the corners and all along all of the faces we can see along the base there is a platform upon which it's built but what we can't tell is how much of the internal you know to firstly to honor the original mound hill structure uh, natural rock that was there also as a way to you know to save construction time we really we really don't know how much of the inside of each of the pyramids but Cafres or the great pyramid still retains you know, it's still there, but they've built, it, clearly they've built on an existing natural stone, and the inside of it, we, we just don't know, but it could be that so much of a pyramid is actually still the natural uh, hill that's in there, and they've built upon it, would be, first again, to honour the original hill that was there, but also as a uh, time saver in terms of construction. Now, once you consider that, that's a considerable portion of the pyramid, and that would greatly affect construction times. Now let's uh, have a look at the Pyramid of Cafre, Stonemason's Commentary by Mike Haddock. Here's some other videos, the Great Pyramid, Bent and Red Pyramid. He also goes to sites in South America. Uh, he has over half a century of experience in masonry. His brother, very similar. He's Mike, uh, their father, had 70 years experience. They are masons and they give some really highly recommend the channel and especially these videos because because of their mason's eye they see features that you just do not see covered by others um, who visit the pyramids and you know often lost high technology etc but they're yeah so I couldn't recommend it high enough but now let's put in a portion of there because especially the pyramid of Cafre one because this will also apply to the great pyramid we'll come to that in a moment but what is how not not what, what was the technique that it was built but how was it built out of what materials and again this you'll hear precision uh precisely cut to you know millions of perfectly dressed stones that is just nowhere near to the true to the reality of cafre's pyramid the great pyramid and the others as well you can only see it um have to watch all of these to get an idea but this is how it works for, for all of the grand pyramids and let's have a look at that now and what is Cafre's Pyramid actually made out of? Hi, I'm Mike Haddock, and today we're going to take a walk around the Pyramid of Khafre. And we're looking at this pyramid now. This is the only one that has part of the existing exterior on it, the limestone up there. Now, this is the southern part of the pyramid, but this is all original bedrock right here. These brought blocks weren't brought in. They were carved out of the original bedrock, just like over there. You see that original bedrock? They carved it out of there. That's why this pyramid, when you look down, isn't straight, because they didn't bring these pieces in. This is the original bedrock. 
This is all original bedrock. So you see this? I'm in the quarry. You can see where they quarried all the stones out of here. And this was for the interior of the pyramid. Now on the facade, they used a different type of stone that went up. They put that on first, and then they filled in the back with junk, and then they just kept going. So this is still the bedrock in the corner of Cafe, the Pyramid of Cafe. And you could see they went all the way up till they ran out, and then they started filling in with other stone, smaller pieces. Pyramid. Now this pyramid, why don't you look in here? All these stones are different sizes. It's all junk. You make the outside look good, you fill it in with anything you got. So as we just saw, the pyramid itself has this bedrock platform upon which it's built and we still have some precisely fit casing stones there on the top. But the overwhelming bulk of Khafre's pyramid also have a great pyramid. You'll also be able to see that in the uh, Bent Pyramid for instance as well is built of anything but precisely fit stone. Only the outside layers are precise in that sense. The overwhelming majority of the volume, the mass of a pyramid, are built of anything but precisely fit stones. It would be just, you could describe it as rubble. They're uh, very irregular blocks. That's, the, that's how they are constructed. That's, again, just a, a fact, and it's just really, there's a narrative in regards to, you know, two and a half million, how did they precisely fit these blocks? Well, they just did not precisely fit those blocks. The outside, yes. Uh, but the outside is like the skin of the orange, you know, it, it, that is a small amount in regards to the percentage of, of the whole. So we saw Cafre Pyramid and we already saw those corners, but now we have the Great Pyramid. And again from that paper, and here's a illustration, I mean a photo, where we can see the northeast corner, we can see the original bedrock there. So again, this... It, the the platform wasn't precisely laid down flat and then built upon both Khafre's and uh, the Great or Khufu Pyramid uh, have bedrock underneath which would firstly that it's at the corner would be a great idea because it's it's like a plug it stops the the stones from put, you know if you block something up really tightly at the corner it's uh, and if it's attached to the bedrock but also, again, it's uh, preserving the original site itself because they were they were hills um, to begin with. But also, there's a structural, uh, especially there at the corner, to hold the, the thing together. And also, it's a time saver. But that, now we'll look at that um, quote. But again, so Great Pyramid, northeast corner, where you can clearly see the bedrock. There's an image of the northeast corner, and there you can see all well, that piece there, but all uh, that whole corner section is still bedrock. There we get an idea of where it is. So it's again, it's pinning it in and, and holding it together. It's also a, a time saver in that sense. So still bedrock there. There's that photo, and then we see the image. Now there's the cross section of a pyramid, and this um, in red. Now, that is a guess, uh, because no one's really sure, but uh, we can tell that the bedrock, again, the it wasn't laid flat, perfectly precision flat, and then built upon. There is bedrock there, and we know that, not only because we can see it there at the northeast corner, but we can also tell by the passages themselves. So we know the height of the outs, well, the, the land on the outside, and... Well, there's original bedrock there, and what we can tell, but because... So we know the elevation of the ground outside, and as you come down the descending passage, you hit bedrock before you hit ground level, the outside ground level. So there is bedrock plug, as it's sometimes described, underneath. But also if you go through the well shaft and where the grotto is, well, the grotto is in the bedrock, and that's even higher. So definitely there and there we have bedrock and that's again uh, higher than the outside layer now it's a, I think that given that uh, Kent Cowway's Cafre and the Great Pyramid are 
awesome astronomical markers in terms of the flood cycles of the Nile are that the grotto itself, possibly even the sub subterranean chamber, but at the very least the grotto, that it was preserved because it had some function, some sacred value prior to the construction of the pyramid itself. But again, that's in bedrock and that's above the outside ground level. So definitely there is bedrock under there. And so these, these images which tend to end, well, we could really adjust that because we have bedrock there at the northeast corner and that's the north side, original bedrock. And so we could really extend that. So the bedrock carries there. And so how much of this, well, again, that red line should extend right out to the corner in terms of where's the original bedrock. And we don't, again, I'm just question mark, we, we don't know how how much of a bedrock is internal structures of the pyramid could it be that the bedrock goes right up to underneath the king's chamber or underneath the grand gallery uh you know sort of little peaks you know is there a, like a peak off there to the side or over here we don't know uh first again to preserve the original site which had again it's very important um you know again long it's Fines go back a really, really long time there, so almost very, very likely that this had some, you know, sacred value, especially in regards to the uh, flood cycles and using them as markers of the equinox and solstice. But so the Great Pyramid or Cheops or Khufu or Kefrem or Kafre Pyramid, um, Kent Cowway's Pyramid as well, they are bedrock they are part of the original structures which have also been built on top of but we come back to this view this is the northeast view again very important corner because this northeast corner so if you go from the southwest and cut a diagonal through points directly to Heliopolis but this is again because we see the bedrock there on the corner but off to the side here we also have an interesting place that's the uh, hot spot and the temperature variance varies curious there's a spot there which is hotter than you know it's six degrees celsius uh 10.8 fahrenheit which is it's, it's I, uh, there are a few possible explanations for what's going on there i i don't know but uh, but there's more value to that particular site because we get an idea we can get see back a little bit further inside the pyramid so you have the casing stones very nice then you have a layer behind them and then when you get further and further back into the pyramids it becomes rubble um, and we'll get a better idea of that but there we can see it's just there's where the hot spot is now we'll come in a second here to the northeast corner because up there we get a window right inside the pyramid we can see that on the inside it's built with very very irregular stone but now for instance you can see and like it's not the construction then but as you further go back it's well, there's a lot of smaller blocks, rubble, uh, very irregular blo blocks, and that's just a few layers back. It's the outside is very, um, and it's, given the surface area, that's a huge amount of work. It can't take that away from them. But there's so, but we don't, you know, that's fantastic. But let's you, the reality of the situation is that we have irregular blocks going back further in, rubble, and. Now here are some other examples, and again we'll see in the Mike Haddock video. The pyramid contains a huge amount of lime mortar. Now it's often said, oh, well, that's just a repair on the outside. Now we can see it goes back on the inside. For them to put that mortar in, they would have to essentially dismantle the pyramids and, and then put that back in, or dismantle a huge part. Because it's a pyramid, the foot... It, you know, it reaches a peak and so if you just take a if you cut the pyramid in half along the height well the, the higher part's only going to be a, a fraction of the lower part because it's much more volume the further you go down and in places even just from the google earth you can start to see you get a window into the inside of there and it's a lot of rubble irregular blocks and we'll get a better idea at that in a moment because up here on the northeast corner is a very important feature now there you can see what it looks like you know again it's not a small little platform there it's quite significant 
and here are some images this was from the Henri Houdin video we're not talking about the internal spiral ramp but uh, for some reason Bob, uh, Bob Breyer who had been there for 20 years had never noticed this feature and I do find that curious but when you go in there you can see it's again it's very so it's not just that platform itself there there is a little gap where you can enter on the inside and that's where we'll have a look now and uh, again you'll see irregular blocks but um, analyzing Egyptian pyramids in a digital age from the Harbour Museum of the Ancient Near East you'll see that they they look at the Kent Cowways and others but in that section we'll see the, the Great Pyramid itself and also the commentary of Mike Haddock on the Great Pyramid again he's you know with his mason's eyes is pointing out things which again you you'll see in these you know tour groups who go there and in the video like they're just not telling you the reality of a the situation they're really making a a false narrative in regards to it they're awesome structures why do we need to add you know like what, what what's wrong with the reality why do we need to add something and and make it what it's not let's look at what it is and we'll see that now because it's it's a huge structure it, and even to make a make it as it is mostly out of rubble is like it's no small it's still bloody amazing like why why do we need to diminish that and uh yeah if, if we're not looking at the reality of it then we can have no under you know you can't talk about how the technique was to build it unless you see of what it was actually built out of and it is mainly rubble uh, very very irregular blocks we'll get a better idea but just that's the kind of you know it's not this you can't fit you know you could you know you can sneak almost get your arm down into into these gaps the gaps are massive uh, they're not this you can't fit a razor in there it's just not true but okay now we'll have a look at uh, especially with a focus on the analyzing Egyptian pyramids in the digital age and some um, commentary by Mike Haddock Hi, I'm Mike Haddock, and today we're at Egypt, and I'm with my brother Jeffrey. And we're looking at the Great Pyramid behind us, and we're going to do a little exploring around it and give us our opinions. We've been in the masonry business, me over 50 years, my dad 70 years, and my brother 45 years. So we're going to give us uh, our opinion, and we'll go from there. We're looking at the Great Pyramid, Jeff. My brother's right here. Say hello, Jeff. How you doing, Mike? See? The way them lines are completely straight going across, what they did was they put the outside first and filled in the middle. Now this is a small pyramid below the Great Pyramid, and they want you to look at what they did. This part is still here. This part is still here. It's weather beaten, but they put the face stones on first. See, this is a face stone, and this part is a part that they filled in. They put it right on top. That's the way they build it. They didn't come here and build the whole thing and then stick the stones underneath it. Doesn't make sense. And let's look at another thing here. This all has like a lime mortar behind it. See it? All this is a lime mortar holding these together. These weren't all perfect stones. And so we're looking at the stones. The pyramid started way down here. What I want, I want you to see is that's a straight roll. Straight troll going right across. Everything's a straight straight row and then they just filled in behind it now this is the south side of it but what i want you to see jeffrey don't you agree with me every row is straight every row is straight so every stone was cut the same size before it got here they faced the outside before they went in the inside and then they filled on the inside the only way they could have did it here's the base of the great pyramid it's all eroded it. but you're going to notice they all got mortar between them. Don't let them tell you they put a razor blade between them. It's all filled with mortar. See it? They're all filled all the way up. You can see them. They got mortar between them. So now we're on the eastern side of the pyramid. And we're walking. And I don't see no difference in the way they built stuff all the way up to the 1940s. You get down to bedrock, put your little mortar thing down, put the stone on top, put the mortar on, put the stone on top, put the mortar on, put the stone on top, you interlock them and you're done. Uh, of the pyramid has been made. The masonry of the pyramid of this period, the post dynasty of the old kingdom, has not yet been fully studied because the most of the pyramid in this period are well preserved. 
So you can't see the section of the pyramid, but uh, general opinion are first. So conventionally, uh, so uh, we arrived at our target area, uh, a small half open space called Notch. Uh, the Notch is located of the 104th course of the northeast corner uh, of the pyramid. Uh, it is often said that uh, stones of the pyramid were perfectly set. Yeah, I think that some of you have visited in Egypt. Then, you know, tour guides actually mentioned you, you know, the, between the stone, even, you know, the knife cannot actually, you know, the putting it. But as you can see here, uh, the stone inside pyramid are not perfectly set and aligned. The, the masonry is loose. And furthermore, uh, you know, the interesting the notch has a crevice in the west that led to another open space called the cave inside the pyramid. So these places can show quantum masonry structure. So here's a cave. Again, as you can see here, stone of the inside the pyramid are not perfectly set on the lines, even not oriented. So these areas are important in study because, as I mentioned, previous archaeological survey of the Great Pyramid have only focused on external part of the monument and uh, in uh, space such as the chamber and the passage and the corridor. But no observation of the core pyramid has been made. Therefore, if we can produce 3D data of this area, this will be the first data Produced this of is actual not my intention. <laughs> this is just you know uh, TV documentary. So, but anyway, so finally we could create 3D data of this uh, structure. This is our 3D data of the notch and cape. This is of course not imaginary CG. It is not, but it is purely based on actual structure of the Great Pyramid. As this shows, stone in this area are much looser and uh, irregular than previously thought. And as I said, even they are not oriented. As I mentioned before, general opinion regarding conventionally, uh, you know, the first core may consist of a horizontally arranged block. The second pyramid may have a core step. Uh, third, core may be built with acceleration layer. However, also photographic section we produced from 3D data show uh, different structure from previous theories. Our interpretation is that you know, this cavity would have been used for the chamber method, uh, which have uh, surrounded uh, by the masonry is already uh, known. So notch and the cave seems to be the similar to this construction. So even in the old kingdom, uh, we can see some example of this method, such as uh, ambulatory of the Sun Temple of New Zella at Abu Ghraib. So besides the notch and the cave here, uh, there are other regions of interest. Okay, so in conclusion, the pyramids, they are not mortalist constructions. This is evident. You can uh, now some will say, "Oh, but that's just a repair on the outside." But we can see the layers going back to get that mortar and that those rubble, small stones in there. You would essentially have to dismantle the pyramids to do that repair. They are not mortarless constructions. What are they made up, made out of? Well, on the outside we see the smooth casing stones, and then a nice fine layer behind them. But if you go back one more row, sorry, not layer, go back one more row, you find that it's rubble the oval and that's the overwhelming construction of it that's the skin and the internal chambers quite precise very well made but and even the the bulk of it which is rubble irregular imprecise blocks is very well made but it's it's not this you can't fit a razor blade in between them type of stuff the pyramids are amazing for what they are it's we don't have to be amazed by what they are not and so this is just a trope and meme that it keeps going around and you'll see it in comment sections or it's this many precise stones you can't fit a razor blade. This is just not true. 